Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous. A secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. eyes like a trap ready to spring Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder something wasn't right he didn't know why but something was telling Luca to get out of there Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan.
aired a long holler into the woods. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire, the source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is, is any of this real? Are you? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course, I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. Mm 
Rollo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Mm Luca moved to the side and pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. His hands shot up to his face. Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Beck's eyes narrowed.
tried to put on a smile. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. Thank you. 
Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. started to wiggle with excitement. Chapter 6 